Hey, welcome to another one of my crazy videos where I'm going to show you how to download STL files from Thingiverse, how to get them onto a slicing program, and how to get them out so that you can print your stuff. So here we go. You're going to start off by going to Google Chrome and open up an incognito window. When you do that, you're going to go to the address bar at the top and you're going to type in Tinkercat or no, Thingiverse.com. So when you get to this website here, we're going to be doing some Halloween stuff. By the way, I just hit allow all for the cookies. Who cares, right? So up here at the top, we're going to type in Halloween. Uh, ghost? How about that? I don't know. Halloween ghost. So I want to try to avoid stuff that's sort of hollow. But like these things, like the Snapchat, I think that's the Snapchat of ghost. That's cool. But like, I'm gonna do this uh, this guy right here, this this little uh, guy. So what you're gonna do here is once you find something that you like that you want to download, you're gonna click on download all files and you're gonna wait. And I want to pause the video, so hold on a second. So now that our file has completed downloading, we are gonna see this box here that asks us where we want to save it. You can click on the downloads area over here. It's fine. Make sure it says downloads. Now notice here it says a zip folder. So let's talk about what that means here real quick, okay? Let me zoom in here real quick if I can. If, I, if this breaks my recording, it would be sad. But anyway, if you can kind of see right here, it has a zipper on it. Those are zip folders. So imagine for a moment, <clears throat> if you will, you bought so a whole bunch of stuff from Amazon, right? And you want them to all come together on one day, not like 10 days. So if you bought 10 things from Amazon and you put them all in the same box, it's essentially the same thing as a zip. You have a lot of things that you want to put together and send it across the internet. So you're going to need to put it in a special container called a zip. And what's going to happen is when we download these things, they have to be extracted. So, and you can call this thing whatever you want it to be called, by the way. I'm going to call it Ghost uh, 2. I don't know, there's already one on here. So I'll call it Ghost 2, right? So that saves to your downloads folder. You can click this button here if you want to see it in the downloads folder, or you can go down here in the file explorer button and click that and click downloads. It's the same thing. So here what you're going to do is you're going to see the ghost thing we downloaded. It kind of looks like this. This guy right here looks like the zipper. So when you get these kind of files, you can't really do anything with them. You have to extract them first. So what you have to do is first click it to select it. And then you can either click the button here that says extract all. Or you can right click on it and choose extract all, which most people choose to do. Here you're going to just click on the button that says extract. But it's saying here that you're going to extract it into the downloads folder. And it's going to create a folder called ghost2. And we're going to actually see it when it's done. So here it is. But I'm going to close this. So when you are in your downloads folder, right? Here's the downloads folder, right? Here's that ghost2 zip that we are looking at, right? There's going to be another folder in here called ghost2 now. Here it is. When I open it up, I have to go into the files folder to get to my little guy right here. I don't have a program on my computer that allows me to preview these because I just had to reformat my computer. However, if you were to look here, you can see it says STL. It will open up with 3D Viewer on your computer, and you can look at it if you wish. I'm not going to. If you also want to, you can rename these things by right-clicking on them and choosing uh, Rename. It says Rename on there someplace. So then if you change it to your last name, and then whatever this thing is, that makes things a little bit easier to figure out whose is whose and what is what, right? So, now, this is a thing that exists in a folder. Now I'm going to show you how to get it into a program like the slicing program we have. One of them is this one, which is called Prussia Slicer. Open that up. Once it has loaded, you are going to notice that. It's probably going to beg you to upload it. Don't do it. But over here, you're going to check the, the printer that you're working with. I'm going to do this one for the Invent 3D 250SHR. Make sure all three of these says that. And don't change anything until you're told to. You're going to add some things on here. You're going to click on the Add button 
to add your file. So this doesn't necessarily go to the downloads folder, so please make sure you click on downloads and you're going to find the folder that says the folder you just, you know, did and it's going to be in the files folder, correct? Remember that? So here's the file that we um, were working with. It's a little ghost keychain. There you go. So if you want to download more stuff from Thingiverse and extract them, you can add more stuff by, you know, hitting add and finding more stuff. But if you just want to duplicate these things for now to have a build platform to turn in, you can do the plus sign here. It says add instance. So you can add a whole bunch of these and then move them. What you want to do is keep in mind, you need to have one empty block of space around these things at all times, especially around the edges. I really like to have two, especially with these tiny little guys. But you can literally fill this entire build platform by doing this. Now, really quickly, over here on this sidebar here, this is these are tools. So this is the move tool. That's how I'm able to move these things around. This button here is for scale. If I wanted to make these things maybe a little bit bigger, you can do that. But keep in mind, it's one thing, so it's going to change them all together. You want to change them big first? Do that first. Or just maybe not select them all together. I think I just had them all selected together. No. Changes them all together. Crazy. Anywho, there's also one here for rotation. You can rotate these things. Uh, f place on face. Okay. That's cool. Whatever that is. Uh, we can slice thing. We can do all kinds of nifty dipty things. Now, over here is what we call the preview. Okay. When we slice the thing... What is it going to look like when we actually print it on the 3D printer? This is what it looks like. So this is the slicing view. This is the regular view. Now over here, if you ever see that there's like little triangles on here for any reason, you got to make sure you click on them because those triangles mean that there's errors in the file. And you click on them and then just it does the thing and it goes away. Okay. Also notice here it says here that there's an error. There's a toolpath outside the print area. That's because when I did this, there's going to be a little thing that runs around here that puts some filament down before we actually get started. It's going to be outside. And plus, even if you can see here, this is outside the printable area. I don't like that. Here's another argument for making sure we have one block of space at least around everything at once, just to give everything a little bit of breathing room. Because now, if we did this instead, I don't need all these, by the way. All right. All right. So if I space all these things out, what I can do here is check this out. Hold down shift. Click each one of these. All these are selected together. So then I can click on add instance. So, wait, what? Let me try this again. <laughs> Add, right click, add instance. That's what you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to get, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. E either way, you're going to have like a whole bunch of these, right? So when you're done, you're going to click on slice now. That's what you should have. And then when you're done, you're going to have an SD card plugged into your computer where you click on export G code. Now from here, what we can do is we can save this in other kind of places. I'm just going to do this in my downloads folder right now because I don't have an SD card. What you're going to do is make sure that this has a name attached to it and what this is. If you have group members that you're working with, please put the group members' names in the file name. And then you're going to click Save. So this is going to save the G code file. This is the file that you would actually take to the printer to print your thing. This would need, need to be saved to an SD card and the SD card would have to be put into the machine for this thing to be printed. I need you to put this file here into Google Classroom for credit today. So however that needs to happen, you need to download this, save it, make sure you have a file ready to go that's good and ready for printing. Like, I don't just want crap just thrown on here. I need you to put some good stuff on here so we can have a continuous flow of things. That's what your assignment is to do today. So please um, do that. Help each other out. Okay, I'm not available. I'm at a doctor's appointment, so please 
Do your best. Thank you.